Today we're going to talk about how to generate code for a Simscape model. So this could be used for any number of workflows from real-time testing to DPIC generation for verification. And we need a really simple circuit to show it off. So I'm just going to build an RC network here. Because we need, we don't need, but we want an input and an output from the Simscape network to show how to set it up for code gen. And this is the most commonly used for real-time testing. So for instance, if you have a Speedgoat system or a DSpace system, that's what you would use it for to run this on that real-time system. But another really common use case is to use it within with a tool such as uh, Cadence's tool stream to actually do verification for ASIC design. Um, and you can use it more for the, just verification with ASIC, but that's one of the most popular workflows because you can wrap your C code from Simscape in a DPIC interface, and that will let you test those systems out. And so you can, Simscape sort of becomes tool agnostic at that point. Once you've wrapped it in DPIC, you can use it on any tool that takes in DPIC. So I'm going to be talking about this code gen workflow for both of those and any other code. So FMI, FMU, this will also work for. So I've now built a basic Simscape network that has an RC circuit. I'm going to increase the RC time constant just so that it's a slower system. So 1,000 ohms and 100 microfarads. And this gives us a low pass filter. Check to make sure it's actually working the way we expect it to work. And we now have a low pass filter. So that makes sense. Let's change our simulation to two seconds. But this is a continuous time simulation. And there's two ways to really verify that. One is to click on the sample time, and it'll tell me what's going on. And if you look here, that means I have a continuous signal. And continuous signals are not good for code gen. Uh, they typically rely on variable step solvers. And there's a lot going on behind the scenes to create them. And we want something that works with a discrete solver for code gen. And the way we do that is there's a few key things we have to take into account. One, it's really important that you have this isolation between Simulink and Simscape, which you will have because you always have to have this with Simscape. But this is very relevant when generating code. Because uh, you might understand that on the, the Simulink side, you know, we've got uh, an ODE solver. So we can solve equations like this. And on the Simscape side, we have a DAE solver. So we can solve equations like this. So differential equations and algebraic equations. So essentially, we can solve algebraic loops if they have a solution. And the tool lets all of this get wrapped in a solver and put in a black box if we configure our solver configurations correctly. Uh, so we can essentially obfuscate everything here away from the rest of the model such that we don't actually have to worry 
about whatever is being done to solve these equations. And that is what will enable the C code generation to work. It's because Simscape will generate the code to handle all of these equations and then wrap those in the model and a C code that is generated. To do that, we have to set this to a local solver because right now it's a global solver that's handling everything. It's this guy right here, variable step auto, that's handling everything. So I want to go to my solver configuration and I want to use this option, this use local solver option. And it's going to be really important to pick the correct step time. Now I happen to be using the correct step time because this is a, a slow RC circuit, so the step time is more than capable of handling it. Uh, the more detailed your system and the, the faster the time constants in it, the smaller this sample time will have to be. And this is also really important. We'll get to this fixed cost runtime piece. But first, let's just do the solver configuration, and we will run this. And it might be hard to see, but this has turned red. And now instead of being continuous, it says D1. So it's a discrete system over here at the base rate. And we can see the solver actually picked a discrete solver. Uh, so this is great because I want a discrete solver to be able to do code generation. I'm going to go to my model settings. And for code gen, the vast majority of the time, except with certain FMU interfaces, you're going to do fixed step. And I'm going to force this to discrete. Now, if you're targeting a, a hill setup, you may actually use like ODE3, ODE2. You may keep those, but discrete is going to eliminate as much overhead as possible. And it's particularly important for raw C code generation, anything involving Verilog or HDL as well. You need it to be uh, discrete. And so now this is discrete. Yeah, so fixed step discrete. And so if the model works in fixed step discrete, that is really good because that means I'm in a good place to generate my C code. And this worked. It ran. And there are my results. Uh, this looks different because I zoomed into two seconds instead of running out to 10 seconds. And we can actually see that this is going on what the time steps are. If we go to style and we go to marker and add a marker, it actually shows us the data points for the fixed step solver. So we can zoom in and see where those data points are happening. And you can see that the system's actually discrete. It's taking steps instead of interpolating. And that is very useful uh, if we were to back out and go back to a variable step solver just to show you what that would look like. we'll see that the time steps are much larger and they're not actually all evenly spaced, which is normal for a variable time step simulation because the whole point of variable, variable time step simulation is to try to improve your simulation speed. And so it takes larger steps when things are steady and it'll take smaller steps when things get fast. So I can reduce the time constant here by making my capacitance smaller. and that exacerbates it where you see, particularly around here, it's taking a lot of time steps, but it's not taking as many time steps when things are steady. But for code gen, you have to sacrifice that speed for the consistency of a fixed step. So we're gonna go back to a fixed step solver, both on the local solver and here. And my time step is still small enough that even though I made my time constant an order of magnitude smaller, uh, we're still taking 
easily enough time steps to recreate the RC time constant dynamics. And so we can generate code from this now. But something that's really important to know is that, as I mentioned, the Simscape solver solves DAEs and ODEs. So it's a more advanced solver, and it's wrapping that behind the scenes. So you don't have to worry about it. But it does matter, because what that means is it's using an iterative approach to solving the equations. And that's why it's talking about iterations here, is because uh, it will do iterations to improve the accuracy of the model. And that means that you can actually have a variable execution time from time step to time step, because it doesn't have to use all of these iterations, but it can use these. So it's going to take from one to three iterations to come to a solution. And I can actually uncheck this, in which case I will get a much more accurate simulation, but I've essentially just unbounded the amount of time it will take to get a solution for a time step. It could take uh, you know, 100 iterations per time step, whereas I'm limited to three in this case. Uh, so this is a bit of a trial by error. You have to pick a number of iterations and see if your model is still accurate. In this case, in RC time constant, I can easily set this to one and nothing's going to change because I have a nice small step size and a very simple set of equations. So one is fine. Three is a good rule of thumb. More complex systems will require five. But again, you just kind of have to guess and check to see what's happening. But definitely keep this checked and keep this value as small as you can to improve your performance. And that is all you need to do to set this up for CodeGen. At this point, I can, just to make my life easier, I could you know, control G this into a subsystem and not even think about the fact that I have Simscape in my model. Because I'm running with a fixed step discrete here, I'm good to go for code generation. I could go to my apps. I could do code gen. And I could go through the quick start guide and everything, but essentially, I should just be able to hit the build button and it'll generate. This will this will just be arbitrary C code that runs on my current computer since I'm not targeting a different system. It's just going to build um, this. I need to set to a discrete rate. So now my Simscape isn't the problem. It's my Simulink model that was preventing code gen. But so this builds code. And again, I didn't set up any of the code generation details for a specific workflow. So by default, it's just going to create code that runs targeting the machine I'm on. But I can target an embedded chip. I can target a real-time system. I can target a DPIC target. There's a lot of options with what you do. But this is just the basics of how you get that started. And uh, where you go from there is really up to you. Uh, but this is the workflow you would use on any Simscape model. Use that local solver. Um, notice that everything now has turned red because everything is discrete. I didn't have my step set to discrete, but now everything is discrete. I can even see the code that this is coming from. Now, if I click here, it's not going to highlight anything in code because this whole piece has essentially been wrapped in a black box of equations. So it's not in the equations. It's not There's not a line of code that represents this resistor. There are certain um, elements in the matrix that represent the resistor, but you're not, you're not going to be able to hand read the equations of this system in the code, whereas the step function actually does have an implementation in the code. And if I had like a gain or any other simulink blocks, I could see what they're doing in the code. But you can see how the, if you really want to, you can read through this to see how the Simscape um, essentially black box solver is implemented. Um, if, if that's what you really want, it's using a backward Euler implementation. But you're good to go with this. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else particularly useful to know at this point. Oh, yeah, one thing is that sometimes people wonder, why do you have to have this explicit solver configuration? Why isn't this part of the top level model settings here? And just as Simulink can support multi-rate systems, 
Simscape can support multiple networks, and those different networks can be at different rates. So you typically would do this if you have different models that have very different time constants. So an electrical system, as opposed to a thermal system, is a really good example of two systems that probably have very different time, time constants. But so I just created a second one. It's running at a completely different rate now. Uh, five times slower. I'm going to look at the scope. And you see that's still plenty of time to simulate it. But we are starting to get a little bit of an inaccuracy in our results. So the blue system is the slower system. And it is slightly less accurate because it's a larger time step. But that's just to show that you can have multiple Simscape networks. They will still support the discrete system. We just have multiple rates now, which is perfectly fine for generating code. Just know that this code will execute at the fastest time rate. It will only execute this portion at the slower time rate. It won't execute this every time, but it will execute some code at the fastest time rate. Um, so that's why you have uh, explicit solver configurations to support a multiple Simscape networks if they make sense. The biggest reason to have multiple Simscape networks comes back down to, again, the fact that the Simscape network has that DAE solver in it. And so that means that there is a matrix inversion in the process. And matrix inversions like to grow exponentially in complexity, particularly uh, once your network gets extremely large. So with you know, 10, 20 components, certainly not going to be an issue. 100 components, maybe. But when you have hundreds of components, if you can split your Simscape network up into multiple networks, you will likely see a speed up because it's reducing the complexity of the matrix inversion. Uh, so with small systems, it's not worth worrying about. But with large systems, if you can figure out how to partition your Simscape network into different networks, that will be particularly relevant because you'll get a speed up even if you don't change the time step. But obviously, if I can make my time step larger, I will also speed up the system. So that is all I have on this topic. Hopefully that gives you a bit more insight into how to generate code. Just to wrap it up, the key to generate code with Simscape is you need to go to the solver configuration and turn on the local solver. You need to pick a sample time that's small enough to simulate your, time, your system accurately. But after that, make it as large as possible to speed up your simulation. You want to keep the fixed cost time consistent iterations turned on. And you want this value to also be as small as possible, because that will limit the number of iterations that are taken to get a solution. But you may need to increase it to improve the accuracy of your simulation. Once you have that, you have a Simscape network that will essentially act as a discrete system in a black box to the rest of Simulink, so it can be used for any code gen workflow particularly C code gen workflow. It's different if you need to generate HDL. Uh, but for DPIC type workflows, for real-time system workflows, this is what you need. And if, you're, if the system works with a fixed step discrete, you know you're in a good place for building your code. Thank you for your time.